What's up folks, David from DoD Media. It has been ages since I've made a video. The reason for that being that I was on a honeymoon uh, for two and a half months. And I apologize for not making anything during that time, but I'm back and today I'm gonna to tell you about the pick whip function in After Effects. So if you don't know what the pick whip function is in After Effects, it's essentially a way of allowing you to pair the parameters of one layer to the parameters of another layer. So that if you move this layer or increase the scale or rotate it, it's gonna do exactly the same things to this layer without you having to go in and change parameters for each of those layers, like scale up one layer and then scale up the other layer. It'll basically mimic one layer's actions on another. Great, it's called parenting essentially because the parent and the child, they, yeah, you get it. But that's a really simplistic use of the pick whip tool, of the parenting tool. It actually allows you to do way more interesting stuff, especially when you start looking at using it for affecting things that are in a different composition. So an advanced use of the pick whip tool, for example, is to create a controller layer in like your master layer, which is gonna control items that are nested in sub comps or in pre comps, which is huge because it means you don't have to skip back and forth between the compositions to adjust, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. So let's jump into After Effects. So in After Effects, I've got this comp one and it's got two solids in it and one's a blue square and one's a red square. Great. And what I'm gonna do is just show you quickly this here parent, this panel is called the parent panel. Uh, right there is your pick whip. It's that little kind of squiggly lasso. And if you click and drag it, I can make the blue square mimic whatever the red square is doing. And you can see there, the parent for that is red square. So now, for example, if I was to move this one around, it'll move the blue square around. Just basically exactly mimicking what the red square is doing. If I was to scale the red square up, it will scale the blue square up as well relative to the anchor point of the item it's parented to. So right now the anchor point for the red square is smack in the middle of the red square, which means that the blue square is gonna scale up in relation to that. So it's kind of nearly like a camera zoom straight in on the red square. Uh, you can do the same thing with rotation. You could rotate the blue square around the red square if the anchor point is smack in the middle of the red square. So that's really practical. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uses to that and that is the you know the bare bones explanation of what the pick whip tool does of what the parenting tool does but now let's imagine that you wanted a quick and easy way to affect the opacity of both of those layers without having to go into the opacity of one of the layers to drag it down to affect the other and you wanted to do that from a different composition so if i go ahead and just duplicate comp one and call this master then i open it up and i delete both of these and just nest comp one within master. Now, anything that happens within comp one, you'll see it in master because it's essentially pre-composed in there. Now, that's cool, except that I wanna see master. I don't wanna to have to go into comp one to change things. I wanna see those changes and control those changes directly from master. So what can I do? Well, it's quite, quite easy, really. You can create an adjustment layer, for example, and call this um, opacity. Oh, opacity. Opacity. Now in opacity, if you go up to effects and presets and look for um, expression controls, nope, that's not gonna work. Uh, look for slider. So within expression controls, there's slider control. If you apply slider control to that opacity adjustment layer, okay, and let's call this slider uh, opacity, then if you go into, oh actually sorry, let's just lock this here with that toggle lock, that way that stays there, it doesn't disappear when I change compositions or items uh, or layers. If you then go into comp one, hit T for transparency or opacity and click Alt or Option on the stopwatch to set a keyframe. Instead of setting a keyframe, what's gonna happen is it's gonna initiate the expression, um, the expression panel, which is where you can type in an expression there. Uh, but you'll notice alongside that, there's also another little pick whip. And if you take that pick whip and drag it up to the slider, which is 
the opacity slider that's in a different comp. And let's just set this to 100 so that it doesn't disappear. Okay. And let's do the same thing on this one. Opacity, pick whip, up to slider. Okay. Then if we change back to master and you drop down your little slider there, now from the master comp, I'm able to affect the opacity of those two layers, even though those two layers are in a different composition. Okay, so now say you wanted to have a second item underneath that comp, uh, comp one that's nested in master, which is also affected by that opacity slider, except that here it's not the opacity, it's the scale that you want to affect. Well, that's quite simple. You just, you know, you duplicate that comp one. So now you have comp two within comp two. Let's just go and change the color of these so we're not confused. Uh, make a pink one and we'll make a green one. Okay, there we go. What you just need to do is get rid of these opacity um, expressions so that the slider isn't affecting the opacity. And instead we'll go with scale. And again, let's come over here to this one, which is still locked. We're going to hit Alt or Option, pick it up to Slider, Alt or Option, uh, pick it up to Slider, and then Master. Ooh, they're not there because I haven't put them in the Master Comp. Bring them into the Master Comp. Okay, they're directly behind those, so let's actually rotate those by 90 degrees. There we go. There's our four items which are separated into two comps. And now if I drag this down, the opacity of two of them fades, while the scale of two others increases and decreases. All that from one slider, all that from using the pick whip expression, uh, lasso, parent, thing, tool, whatever you want to call it. So you can imagine there are a lot of practicalities to this, especially if you want to reduce the clutter on one of your compositions, uh, like your, your master composition, if you want to reduce the clutter of having loads and loads of objects on there, you can pre-compose them, make that quick pick whip, quick pick whip expression, and control it all from a single layer or multiple layers or whatever you want. You can put as many slider effects or expression controls on that one adjustment layer and use that all to control your entire composition, your entire project. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. And really, once you start dealing with the expression pick whip panel, um, because it's expressions, you can do practically anything in After Effects with expressions. You just need to know the math or be willing to plow through Google searches and YouTube videos. Uh, Creative Cow is a phenomenal resource for that. They, they have absolute geniuses who live there. Not actually live there because it's a website, but you know what I mean. They frequent it. And about 99% of the time, that's where I find my answers when I'm stuck on something. So go and check out Creative Cow. They're awesome. All right, if you liked what you saw, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like what you saw, give it a thumbs down, but I don't know why you do that to my self-esteem. Hit that subscribe button to get more videos from DoD Media. If you're interested in sending me something to review or just have, uh, the contact form is in the description. Get in touch, I'd love to hear from you. And as always, if you write me a poem or a limerick or a haiku or a ballad or whatever, and I like it and it's good, then you could win something from my store for free. Cheers. I just realized what I look like with a beard. I'm gonna go and shave this off now. See you in the next episode. Pickwick, 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 Pickw